The Rockford polio epidemic of 1945. 36 deaths, 382 paralysis, 5,000 judged to have polio, but not severe enough to be hospitalized. It started in early July of 1945 with a couple of deaths. After that, there was a period of nothing. Then bang, at the end of July, the epidemic was in full swing. Mrs. A.D. Wheeler, Secretary of Winnebago County March of Dimes. My name is Dr. Henry Anderson. I have been in practice here uh, for 40 years, starting with 1955 at Swedish American Hospital, been in the executive branch for another 12 years. In the process of this, I became very interested in polio, partly because of my patients that I've had and partly because of Rotary. Uh, Rotary International has been wonderful about uh, moving ahead and trying to stamp out the disease that were was very interesting to me back in 1955. Uh, one of the things we are doing here today is to give you an idea of just what it would be like to get polio. And I had that opportunity to have a patient come in my office that was in fact oh, suffering so from, from some <laughs> symptoms. And his dad came, brought him in, he was about nine years old, and he said to, him, to me that he's got a high fever, he's kind of got had the chills, uh, he kind of aches all over, and then he went on and on, and of course I'm thinking, this certainly sounds like the flu. And uh, so we talked about using some uh, acetaminophen or something like that to try to help his symptoms. I'd like to see him in a week. He came back in a week, and he said, something was really bad wrong with my son. He's limping a lot, he can hardly stand up, and so forth. Checking him over, it became obvious that he was a victim of polio. I, coming into this uh, museum that uh, Dr. Anderson put together, it really brings back some memories for me. Uh, the iron lung and back of me, uh, I saw 13 of those in the ward that I spent uh, a whole year in. And uh, it also brings a lot of memories back from what I had. I found out that I had polio in 1945. I was only five years old, so you would think I wouldn't remember, but I do remember a lot of things just because of how traumatic it was. The, uh, my parents uh, had taken me out of Rockford because the epidemic started about April of 1945, and they thought I could uh, be free of that if I went up to our cottage that was in Lake Mills. And what happened is I caught polio up there, which is really interesting. Uh, my mom took me to the doctor up in Lake Mills and he said, well, I'm not gonna make a, a diagnosis, but you go back to Rockford because this is serious. So my mom took me back and I went to, uh, met our doctor in Swedish American about uh, 12.30 in the night, and uh, they took tests and found I had polio. Well, they transferred me to the uh, Winnebago County Hospital, and that's where the polio ward was at that time. And that's where the iron lungs come in. I have very vivid memories of the polio epidemic in Rockford in the summer of 1945. My parents were so frightened that my brother and I might come down with polio. Our friend's parents were also very concerned. There was no understanding as to the cause of polio. So some ideas came about that uh, were strongly held. Swimming. So many of the young people had been swimming and then had came down with polio. So swimming became an absolute no-no. I recall that I wanted to take out the garden hose, put on the sprinkler head, put on the swimming suit and run through that. My parents wouldn't permit that. There were other speculations such as, remember peach fuzz was suspected as being a possible cause. Activities were reduced. We weren't were to overdo things, become fatigued and possibly that might cause it. Uh, we lived about a block and a half from the intersection of Halstead and North Main, and uh, 
County Hospital on the present site of River Bluff Nursing Home is where many of the patients were taken. And I vividly remember seeing the hearses and ambulances passing up and down North Main Street. These are memories that will never be forgotten. The town was in almost a panic. There was a spreading epidemic of polio in Rockford. And no matter who you talk to, doctors, professors, psychologists, nobody knew what the answer was to keep especially the young people from contracting the disease. There was no swimming. There was hot water washing of uh, fruits and vegetables. But these were all just theories. My parents, of course, were simply beside themselves as to what to do with my sister and myself. But we seemed to have gotten through it, and then, pathetically, my sister contracted polio in her left foot. After months of effort and therapy, as it was known at that time, since nobody understood the virus, it, uh, that she seemed better, but for the rest of her life, it, uh, if she became extra tired or under extra stress, the limp would be there, and that's just the way it was. I think that uh, we should be aware of the funding that has been made possible by Rotary for this cause. And we are backed up by the Gates family, Bill and Melinda Gates, who have taken on a further obligation of saying that they are willing to stay with us for another five to eight years, where every dollar that we as Rotarians contribute, they will then double that. So that, if, for example, if we raise nationally, worldwide, $35 million, those are the numbers which are published, that Bill and Melinda Gates will give $70 million. The total then being, obviously, $105 million. That money will do a great deal toward eliminating this once and for all. And it will be like smallpox. It will be something that people will have a memory of but no longer have to contend with. The closing comments that I would want to put together for this would be, we as Rotarians do have an obligation here. We have done a great job supplying money, being generous for the fighting of polio for a number of years, but as close as we are, we need to go back and say to ourselves, there is a little bit more yet to be done, and by gosh, we can do it. And let's get together and do that so that we can then say we are working with the Gates and the rest of the world to rid the world of this wicked disease so it becomes history rather than something that we have to look at. And our then children who follow us will know that we took care of for them. So I am reaching in my pocket, and I hope each of you will do the same.